kitchen so I am going to be cooking frozen chicken breast I've had a lot of people ask how do I cook frozen chicken breast I just took them right out of the freezer super super and simple so let me show you how it is so I have my six quart cooker this isn't an instant pot but you can work the same way as an instant pot this is a crock pot multi cooker I am going to put in my trivet with the crock pot the trivet doesn't have hands which I'm kind of bummed about but that's whatever so I am actually going to turn on the brown and saute on high, so I'm gonna start getting this hot. I'm gonna put about a cup of stock in, just so it sits right underneath, the liquid's right underneath the rack itself. So, I'm gonna show you how frozen these guys are. So I have four chicken breasts. They are super solid. So let me put this in the sink. So I'm gonna put these just in the pot, just like that. Let's put this in the sink. Let me give my hands a quick little wash. I need to grab a towel. All right. So I'm just gonna sprinkle this with salt and pepper. Um, I'm gonna use this chicken throughout the week actually. Tonight I'm gonna to be making quesadillas. I wasn't, totally forgot to pull something out for dinner, which is whatever. Um, I got busy, I ended up going to the doctors for my knee, and then now I'm making an appointment for my dog because I just found a mass on her stomach last night. So this is just going to help get everything situated for the week. So I have salt and pepper in there, and as you saw, it is super frozen. Just preheating the stock is just gonna help a little bit, but please understand that this is going to take a while for this to come up to pressure because it is frozen solid. I only put about a cup of stock in there because the chicken from defrosting will release some juice as well. So just be patient with it. It's probably gonna take about, about a half hour for it to actually come up to pressure because these are so cold. So let's plop the cover on, closing the lid, making sure it's in the sealed position. I'm going to actually shut off the brown and saute and I will bring you up front. So if you have an instant pot, you're gonna do manual pressure. My eight quart actually has a manual pressure button on it, which I absolutely love, but I only have four chicken breasts I needed to pull out for dinner, so I am using my smaller six quart itself. Because they are completely frozen, I'm going to cook them for 15 minutes. So I'm gonna use the poultry. It's on high pressure for 15 minutes and I'm just going to start this. I'm also going to let this do a natural pressure release after it goes off for 10 minutes. So I'll bring you guys back. All right, so this has just come up to pressure. It's taken about 15 minutes for it to actually come up to pressure. So now it's going to cook for the 15 minutes under pressure. If you want to make the 15 minutes go quicker for it to heat up really, Instead of just dumping the stock in like I did, just put it in a microwave safe measuring cup or bowl. Microwave it for about a minute so it's nice and hot and then pour it in there and then put the chicken in. So this is gonna start cooking. All right, so this is gonna start counting up now. So I'm gonna let it do its natural pressure release. A little distracted because I was outside with my dogs. So it just went to 11 minutes, not a big deal at all. So I'm actually gonna shut this off and let me grab my tongs. And I'm just gonna do a quick release pressure for the rest. As you can see, no steam had come out. So that's how you know the natural pressure release was done properly. So let's take some out. Right. So when you ever take a lid off, you always wanna make sure that you open it away from you, just in case if there's any excess steam. Slippery little bugger. Oh, I can't get him. <laughs> oh, too funny. So what I do is I actually move them because they are completely frozen. 
you're gonna see that some of it is still raw or maybe not because it fell in the pot so that's because they were connected together so what I'll do now is I'm going to lay them flat hot tomato just so they're not sitting on top of each other <laughs> I need to get better tongs or something the slippery little buggers all right let me get my hands a rinse real quick You don't have to do it in a two-step process. I personally do it in a two-step process only because I want to make sure that they are fully cooked because if they're touching like the way they were when they're frozen, then you're going to have a raw center. So I'm just literally going to do, um, you want to do a manual pressure because now you only want to do it for seven minutes. So on a crock pot, you can just use beans and chili and bump it down to seven, high pressure, make sure that this is closed and we'll start it out so i know that i have showed you to do it as a two-step process you do not have to do that so if you just it's just same amount of cooking time pretty much but when you're doing it originally for the poultry and you put your four chicken frozen chicken breasts fully you want to cook them on high pressure under poultry or manual if you have an instant pot for at least 25 minutes then you want to check them. Each pressure cooker is a little different, so just be aware that some will take longer, some will take shorter time. That is not a big deal. But I have learned with a crock pot express, if you do just hold, just whole frozen chicken breast at one swoop with them all touching, completely frozen, not separated apart, it takes a minimum of 25 minutes depending on how large the chicken breasts are. So the chicken breasts I put in there are fairly large. That's why I like to do them in a two-step process just so I can make sure that they are fully cooked. And I can't wait to show you a trick how to shred that chicken. And so this time I'm not going to do a natural pressure release since I have already done it. I am just gonna do a quick pressure release. And this will take anywhere from about a minute to a minute and a half for all the pressure to fully release. So I was just waiting for you guys to hear that pin the valve drop. So that's how, when you know it is safe to open, I still say. Open away from you though. And instead of using tongs this go around, I'm just going to take a fork and take them out. Actually, let me just take one out. I want to cut one so you can see it. So I just want to show you that it is fully cooked and everything like that. So a trick in order to shred them, I'm just going to put them in my mixing bowl. If you have a hand mixer, that is fabulous. I do not, unfortunately. So I'm going to put a couple in. I just have the paddle attachment on here and I'll bring you over. And it literally shreds everything for you. Sorry about the steam, guys. So let me pop it up. I just put two chicken, bre chicken breasts in at a time, but as you can see, it is perfectly shredded. So now I have chicken. I can sprinkle it with my quesadilla seasoning because I'm making chicken quesadillas tonight for dinner after I bring Delilah home from the vet. So hope you guys enjoyed some of my tips. Um, I know this was a multi-step for frozen chicken breast. Like I said before, you do not have to do this. However, this is a great trick. If you have a hand mixer in a large bowl, you can put all four chicken breasts in there and just use your hand mixer. That is fine. This is just a small KitchenAid. If I had one of the larger ones, I'd put all four in. So now I have shredded chicken. I can make barbecue chicken sandwiches. I'm making quesadillas tonight. You can use this for chicken and dumpling soup or even chicken pot pie. So the ideas are limitless. So if you forget to take frozen chicken or just chicken out of the freezer to thaw for a dinner, this is just a quick and easy way to do so. The two-step process I did was just under an hour and everything is done. Hope you guys have a great night.